Well, there it is. That's the beast. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today, we're going to be working on this 89 3500 uh, with a 454. So while I have worked on a bunch of these trucks, I've never worked on a 454 of this era. So this will be fun. Little, it should be interesting. Uh, we got a lot to do to it, so we're going to dive right into it. Um, well, it's mostly just a tune-up and a cooling system flush. But uh, we'll get into the details as I start taking that stuff apart. One thing I do find interesting is this throttle body. Look at the massive size of those Venturis, those holes, you know. I'm wondering, it looks like same three bolts. But is it the same as the 350 in my Suburban? Mm, that would be awesome. All right, so the first thing we need to do is drain the coolant from the system. The problem I noticed with this big block is that on the driver's side, they put the drain plug right up against the motor mount. While the other side I you can break loose this side you can't get a wrench on it or a socket on it so without taking the motor mount out which means you'd have to jack up the motor and remove that bolt then you would remove the motor mount from the frame then you could get in and do the bolts that held the bracket to the block and i'm not sure i want to do it that way i think I'm just gonna punch out this freeze plug on this side. So on this side, there's that bolt. Just gotta get a 9 16th on it. And I'll probably have to stab a screwdriver in there because it'll be uh, probably clogged with a bunch of rust. But yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's turning and I'm gonna get the phone out of here before this stuff starts dripping all over my phone. All right, let's see if it comes out. And nothing came out. Uh, so that means I don't have to stick a screwdriver up in there and it's going to go... <laughs> Grab a screwdriver, please. Okay. Uh, oh, this is going to be gross. Oh, it's clogged. Oh, here it comes. Oh, oh. oh. oh gross. It's going everywhere. Oh. Yeah, it's all black all over my hand. <laughs> Look at that. That's nasty. Ew. All right, so this drain down here won't drain no matter which way I spin it. So we're going to just undo the hose, the lower hose down there and drain it that way. Oh, that hose feels like it's full of, like, cereal or something. Ugh. You guys, did you hear that crunching? Yeah. It's a glugin. We'll get most of the coolant out, get the radiator ripped out, and then we'll just have to punch that freeze plug out. But these hoses are going to go. They're trash. I'm gonna take the fan off while the belt's still on because that'll help hold the pulley. Good thing we're getting a new water pump. We're also doing the timing and uh, the timing chain and the water pump. Uh, now the whole stud's coming out. Yeah, now this pulley should come off. Belt's gonna go flinging everywhere. There we go, we're good. Oh, I thought you said it was gonna go flinging everywhere. I love it. Is that on purpose? Mm, no. There's a possibility shit could have went going everywhere. <laughs> Nothing. What, most of it drained out. Just, oh God, listen to that thing. Yeah. Ew. Oh, all over my feet. <laughs> Come on. 
There we go. What's that, what does that hose feed to? That goes Dude. to this overflow. And it's dripping. That's fine. It's just water. We'll let it drain. Oh, to that, that thing. Yeah, that's going to come out to you. This hose goes to the heater. We'll have to check later when we're flushing it and make sure we flush out the heater. That one sounds like it's a bit crunchy too. Yeah. Sounds like a bag of chips. The hose is the only thing we can reuse on this. Oh, orange, ew. Isn't that supposed to be black? It's rust. It's because someone's... So these are to the transmission. These are probably going to leak a little, so... We'll grab a towel. Two 10 mil bolts underneath. He's gonna take the lower shroud off real quick, so I got room to remove this lower line. While he's doing that, I'm gonna remove these upper radiator mounts. That's a 10 mil. All right, shrads out. Shrad. <laughs> got the radiator. Hello. Shrad and waves, dude. You got this weird stripe of light on your mouth that looks like yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, next is getting that last tranny cooler line off. Oh, I hate it. It was <laughs> loose. And then it got tight again. Oh, that's really coming Ew, out of there. What is all that? It's transmission fluid. It's bleeding. It's kind of what it looks like. It usually does. Oh, you could hear it. Grab that towel. So I loosen these up to take this off, but it's a little too stiff to come. Oh, 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 there we go. Never mind. Yeah, we'll Got it replace off. that guy. We'll save that. Now let's take this water neck off. There we go. Whoa. Ew. That's gross. That is so gross. Ooh, and that comes out. Ooh, that is dripping. Ooh, and that is just tearing apart. Oof. Ugh. Another item for the trash can. <laughs> oh, no, you got We got the wires off. AJ just pulled off his side. No, I didn't mean. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so, we got the wires off. Uh, we just got to pull the cap off. And I think those screws back there, if I'm not mistaken, that's a seven. So, I already pulled this off, but I'll show you guys. I had one of these and. Cause I was pulling and I started prying here with a screwdriver and just start here and crack. Right. But if you get under here and kind of just break it loose around all the sides, yeah, that's your best bet. I think is to try to get under there. Uh, but we'll sandpaper that for the new one. And, uh, we'll have AJ do that while I pull plugs. So far, pull out three and they all look like that. We'll take a look at all eight when I get them out. So here's what all eight look like. This is the front of the engine. Cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the widest ones were this number one and number eight. And number eight was actually the widest. Uh, but overall, it does look like they might have been running a hair lean. I'm not a professional, but might have been a little on the lean side, a little whiter, not quite as brown as we'd like to see, I think. We'll just, uh, he said he had a 
check engine light. So once we get this all together and get it running again, we'll see what the light says. It might have something to do with this broken vacuum line or just a dirty air filter. Um, could be this map sensor, but all the hoses are intact except for this broken nipple. You see that right there? That one? No. Nope. That one? Over to the right, yeah. Punch that guy in. My arms aren't long enough. <laughs> You're not even looking. Scoot in there, hug the frame. I can't. Hug it. I'm, I'm up against it. No, your elbow's up against it. Get your chest up against it. But then I can't, like... Hug it. <laughs> Get up in there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Get I, it up there. I still can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to try a different way. You're going to have to hold that with your hand, though. You sure? Well, yeah. All right, we're going to try to sink right under the frame. Ready? Yeah. No idea the way I'm standing. Woo. No, it's not doing it. Not Here, you film. Yeah. This is gonna go right in my face. <laughs> I think it's moving. I think it's going. It's going. I'm trying so hard. It's not going. I'm gonna put a hole in it. Where is it coming? We gotta get out of here. Help me. <laughs> I'm stuck. Tool on there, got the gun on there, I'm gonna give it a shot. Go for it, AJ. This will be the first time he's ever used one. Use it over there. He's down there struggling with the freeze plug. He's struggling, wow. But uh, I'm gonna take these bolts off of this guy and see what it looks like behind there. All right, so after we found the two hidden bolts, right there and right, same side on the other, same spot on the other side, it's the oil pan bolts, 10 mil. Should come off now, go for it. Just grab it, it'll fall off. Oh, that hurt. Hit my arm. Careful. Metal core support there. It's glued. Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead and yeah, give it a little twist. Twist and yank. Take it. Take it. Big ass timing gear. How many different chain links are there? It's a weird design. It's factory design. But... That is thick. Yeah. It's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Original GM. Woo. All right, well, he's tightening up the last of the spark plugs. I am going to crawl under there myself, I guess, and give that thing a look. See if I can grab any part of it with those things and start peeling it out. <sighs> All right, we got the plugs in, the wires on, cap and rotor. 
Uh, hopefully it's all right. I left it up to my kid. I got the freeze plug out right there. So I got the freeze plug out finally. Just got to take it in. You can see it was stretching. That guy did not want to come out. It was stretching and stretching and stretching. And then finally, I started uh, pushing up against one edge and it started flipping in its hole. And I was able to grab the bottom edge and just you know, get on out of there. But, but it's getting late tonight. Sun's going down. So I think I'm going to wrap it up. <sighs> See you tomorrow. I just got back from the store picking up the rest of my parts. I did a little bit of flushing out of the old rusty water. While I'm waiting for the ground to dry, I'm going to pop in the timing kit. Uh, and I got the installer. So let's get going. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to put the whoa, crank gear on first on the circle. The uh, circle is for standard timing. So we'll throw that on first. Mm, hopefully we won't have to heat it up. Uh, but we'll see. So yeah, we are going to have to heat it up. We got the bottle, the flame, the sprocket. Let's see what happens. It's right there. Just, just do it. All right, new timing sets on. Got the bolts cleaned up, fresh Loctite on it. I'm gonna toss them in now. Now this was a little tricky to get in there, to be quite honest with you. Oh. I'm still not on there 100%. Now there you go. Nice, there we are. So that's about how loose the old chain was. That little amount, I just had to move it forward. Loose enough to not like it. And then we're going to torque these, of course, uh, I think to about 30. I don't know. I'll double check the book. Hang on. All right, right there. Camshaft sprocket, bolts and nuts, 20 foot pounds, unless otherwise indicated. So I don't have a foot-pound wrench that goes as low as 20. My inch-pound wrench goes up to uh, 250, which 20 times 12 is 240. So hopefully this will work out. Okay. Didn't feel like very much. Like about 20 foot pounds, so there it is, it's on. Now, before I can finish putting the cover on, I'm going to have to drop the pan uh, and get a new oil pan gasket underneath because, let's see if we tilt down a little. Right here. 
So if I had read the directions on the timing kit, I would have known I didn't have to drop the pan at all. But instead, I had to drop it twice because I didn't read the directions. You're supposed to cut those square ends off so they butt up against the block. Um, but the second time, I thought I messed something up after the first time, so the second time I dropped the pan completely and replaced it with an entire one-piece pan but gasket. Alright, so I got a thin layer of uh, red sealant, and then I've got a thin layer on the hole inside here. You can see right through here the hole. So I'm gonna pop it in. I'll have AJ hold the camera. It's kind of hard to hammer. So it's in and just past flush everywhere. Took a beating, but it's in there. And it's sealed. Now we can take the oil pan off. Let me get the hammer here. I'm gonna do this left handed. It's flush. Looks flush. Yeah, this side covered in a little bit of goo. I don't think we're going to be able to get to that one. Well, I got it off, didn't I? Cool. How did I do it, I wonder? Ugh, ugh, got my mouth. <laughs> so, the timing cover's on, the uh, gasket's Ooh. on there, and now we're just bolting up the oil pan. I can't reach the gun. Alright, so... Uh, we've got the water pump on. I forgot to grab it, the phone, and record while we were doing it, but water pump's bolted on. I got silicone all the way around it. <laughs> got the plug in there. I gotta run to the store and get a 5 8 nipple for this plug and uh, some more hoses. Because the hoses that went to here and then from here to there are shot. So. He's gonna lock tight those guys in real quick. I'm gonna run to the store and get some hoses and a, and a balancer installer because the one I got didn't work. And then we can throw the balancer on. These are the hoses. Just let's see if it's still stuff falling out of it like earlier. but this one was even kinked a little bit so we're gonna see if we can find some pieces that'll match those I don't know what you mean by it's getting tougher every time it goes further back yeah keep going though 
A little further to go. A lot to go. Like. So I got excited, got the pulley on and the belt on, I was like, yeah, forgot the fan, so there it is, box of stuff, yes, new hoses, new radiator, and yeah, I should be able to put that in. Just gotta undo the bolts. I'll probably just leave the belt there while I do it. All right guys, it's the next morning and we're gonna try to finish this up today. I got the last part that I need, hopefully the last part. That's gonna go right there. For now, we're gonna get the radiator in while the fan is out. We'll get the hoses on while the fan's out. Uh, these hoses here, I couldn't get the exact ones so if you can't find a hose you need exactly what you can do is go into your auto parts store and just say hey can I look through your hoses and find something that I can cut up because this one is about good and it's a little off there but I think it can move around I mean it's not terribly off do a little trimming and this hose will probably work for that one we'll see as far as this one goes, I bought this whole big old hose just because it's the only one that had the right diameter that had this bend in it. So that will go like that. I'll trim that hose up. Uh, the reason you want to do this and not just grab a straight piece of hose is because of this reason right here. Anyway, so we'll cut those up and try to put those on too at some point. So, man, it's a hot day. So I won't be able to leave the camera out in the sun. Something stinks around here. Looks like a rotten egg smell. That's not pleasant. I almost forgot. This is the engine plug on the driver's side did the freeze plug on the or on the passenger side I did the freeze plug on the driver's side and forgot to put the plug in on the passenger side okay now the fat end you can see it's got a little flare that goes on the water pump the other end is on the radiator and I haven't hooked up the transmission lines yet so I can keep them out of the way um, <clears throat> and then we've also got this sheet uh, sheathing shielding whatever you want to call it on there to keep it from chafing up against the frame uh, so we just need to slide a couple clamps over it this AutoZone's part number for this hose that I'm using cutting up This is AutoZone's part number for the other hose that I'm only going to use this tiny little bend of. I think that's going to work. It doesn't look too bad at all. Take a look at this bend. I'm going to cut it here. In here. Let's see how close it is. I'm just waiting for the wife to get back so I can run to the store and grab that three-quarter inch fitting. Uh, in the meantime, I filled it up with oil. 
seven quarts. I replaced this little guy, two little 10 mil bolts, not a big deal. And the nipple actually, there wasn't anything left in there. Someone had already pulled out the nipple. Um, so all I had to do was reinstall it. And I got the goo I put on that red high temp RTV around both of these nipples because they're super um, corroded and pits and everything all over them. And I just wasn't confident that was going to seal. Shrouds in, bolted loosely for now. I can get into there and bolt it later. Got the nuts off of the pulley and it is still just kind of sitting there. So we can grab this guy now. And there's still a bolt stuck in it. That's yeah, terrific. I forgot. I was going to have to cut that out. Okay, got it out of there. Uh, let's see if we can get it in there. Okay. We'll get some nuts and washers put onto that thing and tighten that back up. Birds are chirping. Fans on and tight. Bottom shroud's tight. Top shroud can go on now. Maybe. Can't do it with one hand. There we go. Get on in now. Yeah. All right, I figured we could get the air filter assembly on um, this particular one with all the smog has that tube on this side and then this bottom tube here uh, but the single single opening man I need to find that adapter honestly uh, for my truck because on the newer trucks like this Suburban and my pickup in the backyard there's two holes coming out the top and I'm not even sure if I have a place in mind for that, I think I do. I remember seeing a second hole there. Now I know what it's for. Because if I do this, the single thing, the single, what is that called? Anyway, that single rod, then that opens you up to all those aftermarket air cleaners. All right, so we are getting down to our last parts here. The cap and the gasket thermostat water neck and after kind of studying how everything works um, I'm pretty sure it looks like it's still gonna breathe I was keeping this thermostat open uh, until I filled it up but it looks like it'll still breathe with this top hose being right here like this and it goes through the throttle body directly into the heater core then comes right back out here to the top of the radiator again so it's it's a loop at the top half of this motor that will let it breathe so i'm gonna go ahead and slap this together i'm gonna coat both sides of this with that just because you know it's old the services are imperfect and i don't want problems i've been putting red silicone on all the coolant stuff um yeah, so it seems to work for me. All right, got both sides goobered up. Looks about right. Oh, I might want to put the thermostat in first. Oh, thermostat's in. And you don't need sealant on these threads because Let's get it centered. These are blind, I think. It's either blind or not blind, but the bolt holes don't go through. So, you don't got to worry about that. We'll finger tighten these, let it set for a few minutes at most, and then we'll crank her down. I got the correct fitting. I got the silicone on there. I'm going to thread that in. I 
And then this little baby hose can go on right over here. That little baby hose. Clamp it up. We'll be good this side. And I, I hate putting silicone on the hoses, you know, because that's pretty much permanent. But, um, you know, this is the life. So those are all tightened up. And I'm just going to tighten these thermostat bolts down. This can go back over here, that can go there, and that can go... Wow. Okay. That's why they had the giant washers on there. Alright, I'll put a new connector on that. BAM! Put new connectors on both of them just so they look good. Get some nuts on there. Swivel this guy over. Get that on there. Mm. Yay, it's all done and the belt stayed on. Um, but we've got a problem. I cranked it over and it started up, but then it made a weird it was making it is making a weird noise. It's the next morning, and uh, I got the oil pan off last night. Uh, there wasn't anything in the way. Uh, there's no marks. There's nothing hanging out in the middle of the assembly. Uh, I rotated the assembly around by hand, and nothing got in the way. So then we turned it over with the key without the fuel going on it, and just to see what it was doing then, and you could hear the knock. It has a rod knock. It does sound like it's in the back of the engine, like it's one of the last two rods, or possibly something making a noise with the torque converter or transmission. Okay, so you won't believe what I found. You see anything missing? I was checking the end play here with my little handy dandy tri bar, pry bar, but I can't find it now. So. I moved the crank forward and when it broke free from like the stickiness or whatever and then slammed over into the other direction, I heard a rattle. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, see? Look at that noise it's making for moving the crank back and forth. It's ridiculous, right? That's got to be the sound I'm hearing. Looks like what I got are metric 10 by one and a half. So I got some new bolts, I'll only need three. Got some fresh oil. We're gonna reuse the same filter because it's it's brand new, but. Uh... Okay, ran into a little problem. I'm pretty sure my transmission is a TH400 or THM400 Turbo Hydromatic. Um, they made those all the way until 90 and put them in trucks like this according or from what i can tell in the pictures and my googling uh, um and you know identifying marks on the side i'm pretty sure i got a thm 400. problem is they're not listing the torque specs for the torque converter bolts for a 400. there's just those three and i know it's not a 4l60 because i've got two of those which means it's not a 4l80 because they're well, they don't look the same, but I know what those look like. The only one I don't know is a 3L80. I don't know what that looks like, but from the pictures, I don't think it's a 3L80. I think it's a THM400, which they don't list. So they do say that the 4L80, which is the big boys, well, no. I don't know what the deal is there. But it was the same way with the flex plate bolts, the six that go to the crank. The 7.4 liter it was a lot lower than the five sevens i don't know why that is but uh i'm cranking mine down to 65 not i'm cranking the torque converter bolts to 65. that's what i'm gonna do you guys can do what you want to do Alright, so I might have found out why this belt's walking off the crank pulley here. 
There's a bolt missing right there from the bottom of the power steering pump bracket. So the power steering pump along with the pulley not being pressed on all the way. It's keeping the belt too far out. It's walking off the crank pulley. The problem with this hole is that it's stripped. It was a 3 8 by 16, so now I'm going to the next size up. There it is. 7 16 by 14. Use a 3 8 drill. So I got the drill bit, and we're going to drill a hole right there and then re-thread it and we'll see if that works so i dipped my bit in oil here and we're gonna drill it out okay so that was already almost completely drilled out the and threader <clears throat> i'm gonna have to grab it with like a crescent wrench and do a little out of time. Got a new bolt in, nice hardened one. So that actually worked out really perfect. Gaps closed up. That's just oil I used for lubing the bit. Uh, let's see, now I'll go get a puller or a power steering pump install kit and push that in the rest of the way and that should take care of the belt walking off the pulley down here all right i forgot to grab the camera but we're getting the oil pan on um and then we can drop the engine back down and put the motor mount bolts in and then we'll go from there all right oil pan is on and tight got the dipstick tube back in Got the oil going in. Did you eat? Hello? Huh? What? Right there needs about a half a quart, but we're there. All right, let's start it. We're, we're gonna start it. What's up? In this. Okay. What kind of batteries does it take? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll look at it in a minute. Right now, we're going to start this truck. You want to hear this thing fire up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's more animated. Come on. It doesn't want to go in. We got no RPM gauge. That's cute. Sounds like it's starting to idle down already. No more knock. God, that's a relief. I am so happy that finding those flex plate bolts is what did it. Alright. Temperature's still not even creeping up, but I'm not sure if the temperature works though. So we're we're gonna shut it down. Ugh. Yeah. Gosh. Go outside. I'm outside. Technically you're in the garage. Okay, gallon number six. Ugh. I hope this isn't going into the oil pan. That wouldn't be funny. Oh, we're finally to the top. So these big blocks are thirsty.
Yeah. What up, dog? Come here. Hi. Who's this one? What's up, Mr. Jealous? Hi, doggies. Oh, like the video's not long enough already. I want to show his dogs. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sorry about the abrupt end, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. I appreciate you hanging in there and watching. If you got any questions, please let me know. And also, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps me out. You guys have a good day. Till next time, peace.